Uh, for more reaction to the tensions with China and how they're playing into the campaign 2024, we're joined now by Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, thank you for taking time. Let's get your reaction immediately here to the Blinken trip. And now we're learning that President Biden saying today that he believes that spy balloon that traversed the length and breadth of some of our most uh, sensitive nuclear missile sites, he believes that it was uh, more embarrassing than it was intentional. Your reaction? Look, there is little doubt that if that had been a Russian spy balloon traveling over half the United States, we would have shot it down and ratcheted up sanctions instantly. The reason we didn't do it for China is frankly because we're frightened. We're dependent on China economically for our modern way of life. That's the reality. So I've said as president, our top policy towards China should be to declare economic independence. Right now, China is testing us day by day. I think the spy balloon, I believe, was actually more likely to be intentional than accidental. See what they're doing in the South China Sea. See what they're doing with the spy base reportedly now being built in Cuba. They are testing us. And right now, they sense our weakness. We need to project strength. But the first thing we need to do to project strength is actually declare economic independence, which is one of the core tenets of my foreign policy. And how would a President Ramaswamy's policy towards China differ from the past policies of the Trump administration? So the number one objective for me is separating Russia from the alliance that it has with China. That is the number one threat that we face as the U.S. today. So I would actually end the Ukraine war specifically on terms that would require Putin to exit that military alliance with China. With that, Xi Jinping no longer has the confidence to go after Taiwan because his bet is that the U.S. won't want to go to war with China and Russia at once. If we pull Russia out of that alliance, we deter China from going after Taiwan. And one difference from President Trump is that I would re-enter some of those trade relationships with Japan, South Korea, Southeast Asia, Australia, because that puts us in an even stronger position to actually declare economic independence from China. So when I'm sitting across the table from Xi Jinping and say we're going to cut the cord economically, he will know that I mean it because we actually have the hand that we can play, which is stronger if we're partnered with other allies around the Pacific. Vivek, what do you make about the fact that Bill Gates is talking to President Xi and yet this is Secretary Blinken's first visit uh, from any administration official to China? What I make of it is that China has recognized that U.S. companies are actually pawns, foot soldiers in their game of strength versus the U.S., whether it's Bill Gates, frankly, whether it's Larry Fink or Jamie Dimon or Elon Musk. This is what China's recognized, is that U.S. companies will jump. If Xi Jinping says jump, they'll say how high. But the question is, they're using access to the Chinese market as a carrot to get U.S. companies actually at least on their side, if not neutral. That's why I think we need to declare economic independence, total decoupling from China. That puts us in a strong position to think on the timescales of history rather than the timescales of quarterly earnings reports for election cycles. Because keep in mind, we never depended on the USSR for our modern way of life. We do with respect to China. That's what makes this threat unique. And I understand this deeply, and I'm going to set both our foreign policy and our economic policy accordingly in a way that protects Americans both in the short run but more importantly, over the long run versus that top threat, which is Chinese dependence. Let's switch gears. I want to talk about the campaign trail. Former President Barack Obama is attacking two of your rivals, Nikki Haley and Tim Scott. Listen here to a little bit of President Obama's comments. I think there is a long history of African-American or other minority candidates within the Republican Party who will validate America and say, everything's great and we can all make it. Your reaction? So look, I actually spoke out against Obama's comments on behalf of Tim Scott, Nikki Haley, and frankly myself in this race. There's a toxic philosophy on the left. I described this in my book, Woke Inc., several years ago, which says that the color of your skin predicts what you're allowed to say about this country that you can't say systemic racism doesn't exist if you have black or brown skin. Congresswoman Ayanna Presley of the squad summarized it when she said, we don't want any more black faces. 
that don't want to be a black voice. I reject that dogma. I think that predicting what someone's views are based on the color of their skin, that is racism. That is psychological slavery. And I reject that view, saying that each of us can think independently and have our own views. Frankly, I was disappointed in Barack Obama. I think he sets a poor example for the country when he tells us that we can't think independently, regardless of the color of our skin. I probably don't fit Ayanna Presley's description of what counts as a brown voice, but you better believe that's why it's important for folks like me, or Tim Scott or Nikki Haley for that matter, to speak our minds openly. And for my part, I commit to doing that throughout the rest of this campaign trail. I think that's going to be unifying for the country. You've talked a lot about this. Do you believe that we as a nation obsess too much about diversity itself? I think we do. Our diversity is not our strength. Our strength is what unites us across that diversity. That's what makes America great. And I'll tell you, I'm 37 years old. I'm the first millennial ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. I grew up into a generation that taught us to celebrate our diversity so much that we forgot all of the ways we're really the same as Americans. We say e pluribus unum for a reason. It means from many, one. That's the dream I'm running to revive. And I think most Americans still share that vision. Mm -hmm. We just need to have the courage to say it out loud and revive it. That's what we're doing on this campaign. Well, Vivek, you're talking about running to get the nomination. You and I ran into each other uh, in Miami outside of the courthouse this week. And, And I put to you the same question I did then. And that is, how do you intend to rise to the actual nomination when you and some of the other candidates are really just supporting the front runner who has multiple double digit lead uh, in the polls? I'm supporting the American people against the overreaching administrative police state in this country. That's a great threat to liberty. And if they can do it to Trump, they can do it to anybody. So that's who I'm actually standing for. I stand against two standards of justice. One for Antifa, one for peaceful protesters of a different persuasion. One for Julian Assange, another for Chelsea Manning. Now one for Trump, another for Biden. That's what I stand for. But do you believe... But do you believe, yep. Vivek, that the charges, some of these charges against former President Trump are indeed serious and could be devastating to him personally? I think the charges are politicized. However, I would have made different judgments than Trump did. A bad judgment is not the same thing as a crime. But I'm in this race for a reason. We have to stop looking back at retroactive grievances and start moving forward as a country. Stop running from something. We got to start running to something. That's what I'm leading. And you ought to talk about a path to the nomination. It starts on the debate stage. I'm looking forward to the debates starting in August, spreading through this fall. I'm polling a little bit ahead of where Trump was in 2015. Hmm. I think our party is hungry for an outsider. I'm the outsider in this race. And I'm going to speak truth in a way that's unconstrained. I think our base is hungry for that. And I think the debate stage starting this fall is going to be a crucial catalyst for this race. But even though I'm running for the nomination and it would be easier for me if Trump were eliminated, I still stand against that type of federal police state corruption. The way I'm going to win this election is by convincing the citizens of this country that I'm the best candidate to take this forward, not by eliminating my competition. Vivek Ramaswamy, thank you for your time. I look forward to following your campaign and hope you do make it on that debate stage. A lot of different voices need to be heard from. Vivek, thank you very much. We'll be on there. See you. I shall.